Working on an unfinished Victoria steamboat, part six, a live steam test of the entire steam plant, showing the operating procedures, plus straightening the bent flagpoles. The job starts by filling the boiler with water, but only fill it three quarters full. Do not overfill the boiler, you do need to leave a steam space. The burner is now lit, I use my small blowtorch because the igniter that's built onto the plant is worse than useless. This plant is fitted with a displacement lubricator, these are very simple yet clever devices. It's a good idea to get into the habit of closing the steam valve before removing the top cap of the lubricator. If you don't do that, the cap of the lubricator may go into orbit. The lubricator cannot be filled with any old oil that you find lying about, it needs to be steam oil, it's very thick and gloopy. Never use motor oil or machine oil in a displacement lubricator. In no time at all, the boiler's getting hot, and this is with a number 8 jet. Jerry at Clevesden Steam said a number 8 jet is what you're supposed to use, and he was correct. The next part of the job is to lubricate every moving part of the engine. It doesn't matter if you spill some oil on the base plate, it's easily wiped off. This took me by surprise. These boilers do not normally raise steam as quick as this, but then again, this is an early Cheddar Models boiler, which is a fire tube boiler, not a water tube type. Here you can see the safety valve blowing off just above 40 psi. The engine will not start straight away. The first steam into the cold engine condenses the water immediately and it starts the hydraulic lock, which is not very serious on an oscillating cylinder type of engine because the parts just move out of the way. The engine cylinders soon get hot and it starts to run quite well from the outset. There is still a bit of condensing going on and also the exhaust goes straight up the chimney along with the oil residue which then drips down inside the chimney onto the boiler and makes a sound like a fish and chip shop. Anticipating this, I bought a medium sized exhaust condenser from Clevedon Steam. For complete plants and accessories, Clevedon Steam is the place to go for these kind of plants. The web address is on screen at the moment. As I move the camera up the chimney, you can see the pipe at the top is now blowing off the steam from the safety valve. And as soon as I open the steam valve, the engine bursts into life, although slightly erratic for the first few revolutions. But once the condensate is cleared from the cylinders, it runs beautifully. If you try and listen in over the sound of the engine, you will hear some popping and crackling coming from the boiler. This is the steam oil burning off and also the water dripping down onto the burner. I'll stop talking for a while and let you have a listen and watch the steam test. This engine is not a new engine but it hasn't done much running so I'm giving it a bit of an extra treat, some more oil. The regulator on the top, which doubles as a reversing lever, works perfectly in both directions. The drain valve on the displacement lubricator is problematic, I'm having to tighten it using a pair of pliers to stop it leaking. The engine is really running well, it's very good indeed. I'd just like to mention something interesting. The temperature of the steam is relative to the pressure. Live steam at 40 psi is 141.5 degrees centigrade, which is sufficient to bubble the old varnish on the boiler cladding. It shouldn't, however, get much worse than this. The steam plant was in steam for about 15 minutes with no problems whatsoever. Well that is, apart from the leaky valve on the displacement lubricator. I put it in the lathe and cleaned up the end using a file, followed by some wet or dry sandpaper and then Scotch-Brite. Whether it works or not remains to be seen. To run this engine on compressed air it's very easy to do. You just remove the steam valve 
and fit an airline in its place. After the steam run, the engine is running a lot better. When the boat first arrived in my workshop, both the engine and the propeller shaft were seized up and didn't rotate. Because this model boat has an ABS plastic hull, I'm not going to do any steam testing with the steam plant in the boat. At the previous house where I used to live, in the middle of the garden, there was quite a nice bath, and I used to use this for testing steamboats all the time. As the boiler cools, some of the bubbling goes back. It's only to be expected with a steam plant of this age. I have seen it before. However, by removing the boiler bands, it's not too difficult to rub down the varnish and re-varnish it. For me, though, that is not part of the job. I'm going to move on to a small extra. Three of the brass flagpoles were bent, so one at a time I put them in the chuck of my small walk or lathe and heated them to a dull red heat, then I left them to cool naturally. That's the way to soften brass. After that, one by one, I fitted them back in the chuck and straightened the end using a tap wrench. I should have used a pin vise, really, but they're up in the other workshop. A tap wrench still does the job quite well. The brass bends very easily because it's been softened. I'm purposely over-moving the end of the piece of brass in an attempt to work harden it. They're not perfectly straight, but straight enough for the job they're doing. Here are the three flagpoles. There's actually another one, but I don't know where that goes, and it's longer than these. I'm going to put the flagpoles in the boat itself for safekeeping. In the next episode, I will show some modifications that I'm going to make to this plant, just to make it simpler to operate and a bit more environmentally friendly to wildlife in the lake. That's it for now, though. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.